Good evening. You all be taking your Bibles and turning to 1 Peter chapter 2. Arts of. Can you hear me? Can anybody hear that? Is that better? Maybe I'll have it too low. Can you hear me all right? Test, test. First uh, Peter chapter 2 is where we're at. Uh, probably saw the, the text go out about Jason Moore from Union Central. It, things are not looking good. He has a brain bleed. He's been flown to Little Rock. He's about he's about 46 or 47. Uh, he's got about a six or seven year old boy. So this is Louise Moore's son. Louise worked at the hospital for years and years. Uh, what what'd she do there? Case management. Case management. So this is her son. So. Very serious situation. Things are not looking good. So we definitely need to pray for him. Uh, anyone else? Uh, let's remember Ken and Naomi Burrow. And I do not have the my bulletin prayer list with me. So uh, you got one there, Brenda? not feeling well tonight. Is he doing better? Still not feeling well? So we need to remember Art. Uh, does anybody else have any announcements? What about Jay Dix? Have you heard anything on him? Not lately. I haven't. I heard he was in a home at uh, Jonesboro and he lost the leg. But I, heard I did hear that he they had to amputate a leg, yeah. But I haven't heard anything else. Uh, yeah. Really bad situation there. Anyone else? Hank Walters had his surgery and is doing okay. Okay. So, Brenda, you care if I write in your bulletin? No, that's fine. <laughs> Anyone else? All right, let's go to God in prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we humbly pray before you. We Give you praise and glory for everything you blessed us with. and Just pray, Father, you'll be with us tonight. Pray that we worship you in spirit and in truth and learn more about you and apply it to our lives. And pray, Father, that you'll be with all those just uh, that are that have been mentioned on our prayer list and that are, that are in the bulletin. And uh, just pray, Father, you'll be with each situation. Pray especially right now for Jason Moore and just... <clears throat> We know that the, the news has, has not been good today, but just pray, Father, that you'll watch over that situation. We pray, Father, that you will heal him and uh, pray that you'll be with his family and uh, during this difficult time. Pray, Father, you'll be with that entire situation. Pray that you'll be with all those just mentioned. Continue to be with Jay Hicks and Hank Walters and all those on our prayer list, the Beth Brown family. <coughs> And be with Glenda Clements and Randall Glover in, the, in their upcoming surgeries. And Kyla Penny, who's undergoing lots of health problems right now. Pray, Father, you'll be with her. And Eddie Clower. And uh, pray, Father, you'll be with each situation. Pray that you'll be with us all. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. I just decided to cover First uh, Peter, since that's where... We're looking, and Sunday morning I decided to not just jump into Revelation. I, I just hate to take that away from Art. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm chicken. Yeah, you're right. I am chicken. I taught Revelation at Union Central about 15 years ago, and uh, I tell you what, that's tough. It's really tough, and that's all. I've not I've not attempted it since. So we we are in First Peter chapter two, and uh, 
we'll, uh, we, we was talking about the stone, but we'll, let's back up to uh, verse 4. Let's just read verses 4 through 10. Coming to him as to a living stone, <clears throat> rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. There's lots, there's several direct quotes here from the Old Testament. There's also Old Testament references in here, even though it's not uh, necessarily a quote. Uh, that there about the who once were not a people but now are the people of God. That's from the book of Hosea. Uh, you know, these folks, a, a lot of them were probably Jews who had converted to Christianity, so they understood and really appreciated the Old Testament terminology, but some of them were probably not didn't did not have a Jewish background just for the fact uh, that quote or not not necessarily a quote but a reference there to Hosea uh, who once were not a people but are now the people of God who have not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy so uh, it's just amazing you know the the illustrations that are used and we've talked about how Jesus Jesus is the carpenter. He's the builder, and, you know, we, uh, we think about a carpenter, we think about a woodworker, but more than likely, he's a stone worker uh, in that area of Galilee. I'm not saying he didn't do any woodwork, but I think that's one of the reasons that the stone masonry image is used here, because he dealt with that quite often, and... Uh, so we, he, he is the chief cornerstone. He is a living stone. We are the living stones that make up the spiritual house. And we, we had the slides up here Sunday morning, or it might have been the Sunday before, I can't remember. We, you, and I are, you and I are the spiritual stones that make up the house, the house of God. And as... You know, this, this uh, term here, are being built. Uh, what verse was that? Uh, verse, five. verse 5, yeah. <clears throat> are being built. Now, he built this church. He built everything that goes with his church, his worship. Uh, you know, so that part's been built, but... You and I are the church, and this our being built was present tense 2,000 years ago. This is still present tense because as someone obeys the gospel, Acts 2.47, the Lord adds daily to the church those who are being saved. So as you obey the gospel, you are a living stone. Once you... Once you obey the gospel, you become this living stone and he <coughs> adds you to his spiritual house. Are being built. It's still happening today as people obey the gospel. So, isn't that awesome? It really is. 
Uh, any comments here? And, and I know we've talked about verses 4 through 10 for several several classes now. But that's okay. I mean, this is a really <coughs> neat passage. It really is. Does anyone have anything they'd like to add to that? <clears throat> Verse 8. The stone of stumbling or the rock of offense mm -hmm. of people. And it, it goes on to say, it's what I'm reading here, they stumble being disobedient to the word. The reason they stumble, the reason we stumble today is because we don't do what the word says. That's why I, mm -hmm. we were disobedient. Yeah. To the work. Does that yeah. make sense? Yep. Yeah. yeah. We uh, and in and, and probably in particular he's talking about those uh, unbelievers in general. But you and I, we still stumble, even though we even though we're a living stone in the house, we still stumble, don't we? I've got a quote here from uh, Truth for Today commentary. I've used this in some sermons before, years ago. <coughs> and uh, this was Dwayne Warden wrote the Truth for Today commentary on uh, 1 Peter. And uh, I've never met the man, I hadn't heard him speak or anything like that, but he's got a good commentary. And this. Uh, I just want to share this quote with you. Jesus is a cornerstone, a rejected stone, and an offending stone. Further, his people are stones in the temple of God. Christians partake of the qualities of Christ when they model their lives after him. As living stones, they make up the building of God. Jesus is the sure foundation on which the Christian lifestyle rests. Christians are also rocks. Foundations in American society seem to be crumbling. However, this is not the case for those who look to Christ as a cornerstone. Christian husbands honor their wives. Wives respect their husbands. The two of them rear children in the knowledge and teaching of the Lord. They treat their neighbors well. Their words are solid as a rock. Honesty is a trademark. Their way of life marks them as unmovable. Jesus is the solid rock, the secure foundation on which the Christian's <coughs> faith, hope, and confidence rest. Earthquakes may shake the building, but the gates of hell itself cannot move the foundation on which Christians build their lives and place their hopes. Centuries pass, nations come and go, mountains rise and melt into the sea, but Christ is the rock. And just like the God and Father in Psalm 102, verse 25, of old you laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the work of your hands, they will perish, but you will endure. Yes, they will all grow old like a garment. Like a cloak, you will change them and they will be changed, but you are the same and your years will have no end. I love that. I love that. I thought that was really good. So, we're built on the foundation of Christ. Jesus, no, no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11. You know, as we look around and we see society crumbling, isn't it awesome to know that we've got something immovable, unshakable? You know, Malachi 3, verse 6, he says, I am the Lord, I do not change. Uh, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, the, the world is looking, but they're looking in the wrong places. Uh, so, what's your comments on that? You know, the, the, the church isn't, isn't movable, but, you know, our country was founded on Christian principles. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is where Jesus, the, you know, the cornerstone has, they're trying to take that out. Yeah. And, that, and so our country is 
shape of all, unfortunately. Sure. You know, yeah. that's what's the best. But we need to remember that also the country is not the church. I, I know that. I know yeah. that I'm just saying, you know, to use yeah. the analogy, when you try to pull the church out of the country. The country sure, out. absolutely. And, you know, you have uh, many people believe that the United States is a holy nation. Uh, well, if we were built on, found, you know, Christian principles, but the holy nation mentioned here in, in verse 9 is the church. We're the holy nation. Uh, you know, he talked about a kingdom. He's building a kingdom. Uh, the kingdom and the church, he uses them interchangeably. What's another word for kingdom? Nation. <coughs> holy nation. Uh, Diana, what did you have? I was rereading verse, verses like 7 and 8, and it reminds me of Jesus' parable about building your house on the sand or on the rock. Yeah. And it's the same kind of thing. That's good. Seven says, now to those who believe the stone is precious, which the next verse says, the quote says, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. Well, that's more like you built it on the foundation. That Christ is your foundation for your life. And then it says, but to those who do not believe, and then the other quote after that is, the stone that caused men to stumble and the rock that made them fall. If you're, you're falling because you're not building your life on that foundation, and our nation is not mm -hmm. believing in absolutes that God presents as his no. way to live. Um, most of our society doesn't believe in absolutes at all. Uh -huh, no. God's pretty absolute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People say that, you know, they, they don't believe in absolutes. I want to ask them. When I hear that on TV, you know, I, I, want to, I want to be there in person. When they say there are no absolutes, I want to say, are you absolutely sure? <laughs> They'd probably say absolutely not. But, you know, I, it's just crazy how people believe that there's no absolute truth now. And, and what Wes said is 100% right. I mean, our country was founded on Christian principles. Uh, you know, how many times is God mentioned in the Constitution? I don't know, but He is. Several times. And the way it was written... You know, it had uh, so I, we we don't need to get the country confused with the church, but at the same time, the country was blessed when we were the country was following God's principles, and uh, no longer doing that by and large. So, but Evan, also when you you know not just our country, but the church Christendom as a whole is starting to not believe in absolutes either. Yeah. And that's why we're having issues and division because even Christians are not believing in absolutes anymore. And that's that's where they're assembling and yeah. failing. Yeah. Well, you know, the old saying is, I, I know I heard this one time and, and I've used it for years now. Maybe I made it into an old saying. But it's something like, Whatever is happening in society creeps into the church because people make up society and people make up the church. And that's what we see. And, and that was happening 2,000 years ago. You read the book of 1 John, uh, some of those teachings that were out there. Of uh, It was out in the world that uh, Jesus Christ hadn't came in the flesh. Guess what? That started creeping into the church. That's just one example of current events affecting the church. Current events affect the church today. We've got to guard against it. Anyone else? Um, I wanted to see. Anyway, this is just a really neat passage here. Uh, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Is it the, is it the King James that says his own peculiar people here? We're peculiar to the world. We're weird. I tell you what, I see what's going on in the world and I'm glad I'm weird to them. I, I'm telling you, that's some... It's, it's absolutely crazy 
what's going on in the world today. Uh, anyway, we'll move on. Verse Society 11. Do what? Change. Society may change in the sense that, like, we don't go any longer ride in chariots or on horses or things that fly in mm -hmm. jet airplanes, but as far as people are concerned, we'll never change. I mean, we'll never be. You know, we, we'll always have a soul and a spirit, whether you believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So the same problems and difficulties are going to be, you know, are going to happen to everybody. Yeah. So just because we're, like I say, it's an air-conditioned building and mm -hmm. all these things around us, you know, and well, this, some people say, well, that's an old-fashioned book. The reason it's never be old-fashioned is because people will be people from Yeah. Home. Yeah. People, so people has not have not changed uh, by and large, right? No, they haven't. The same things that were affecting people two thousand years ago affect people today. Uh, it might be a different set of issues per se, but in, in general, it's the same. Yeah. I was thinking about that when I pulled up tonight. I just pulled up. And I'm like, Man, I sure am glad all we got to do is go around and get a switch. On that corner and build a fire. Get a little more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. That's not what you're talking about, I know. Well, I, you know, technology's really changed, but but people's, but people in general, people's <coughs> wants, people's needs haven't changed, have they? <coughs> so. There's always been evil people, too. Always, yeah. And there always will be. Yep. <coughs> Yeah. Yeah, you read the book of Judges. Every time I think how bad the world is today, I can read the book of Judges and think, well, we might not be quite there yet. People just don't learn from history. No. If you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it, ain't you? All right. Verse 11. <clears throat> Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. You know, I really, I don't know how accurate it is there uh, where I said, the King James, instead of saying his own special people, his own peculiar people, but I think it's, I think it applies really well. A peculiar people. They think we're weird. And notice that we are to be as sojourners and pilgrims. How many times do we really mean it when we when we sing that song, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. I mean, think about that. We, we're we pretty comfortable here, ain't we? Yeah. How often do we really live by that concept? This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. I, I'm, a, I'm a pilgrim. I'm a sojourner. I had an acquaintance once that said we spend a lot more time praying to keep people out of heaven <laughs> than we do praying to get them in. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with praying for the sick, is there? <coughs> but I know, I understand what you're saying. With those prayers for physical healing are not answered, if that person's a Christian, it's going to be okay, isn't it? It's actually... An improvement. Yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I was talking to Ken Burrow a couple weeks ago down at the shop. We talked about his uh, treatment and he was fixing tape. He said, well, if they work out and cure me, that'll be good. I win. Yeah. But if I die, if it kills me, I still win. Yeah. 
So that's a win-win. And, and that's what Paul kind of worded it in Philippians chapter 1, didn't he? To, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's a good point. Anyone else here? So, and notice, current events, what's going on in society. Uh, he, he says here in verse 11, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. You know, Ephesians chapter 6, we're told to put on the whole armor of God. We're in a, we're in a war. We're in a spiritual war. And, and these things that happen all around us, the devil infiltrates us any way he can, whether it's through TV or or cell phones. I mean, I've, I've got my Bible on here. That's awesome. If you're not really careful, there's bad things in here too. And the devil's going to infiltrate you any way he can. He is warring against your soul. So be careful how you use this. Man, it, this is great if you use it right. If you don't use it right, this is awful. So how are we going to use it? How, and it's not just that. It's it's money. It's uh, it's our the cars we drive. I mean, it's everything. How are you going to use it? You going to use it for good? Use it for evil? So abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. And, and notice, even if they speak against you as evil doers, if we will carry on our good works which they observe remember what Jesus said let your light so shine before men that they may uh, see your good works and glorify your father in heaven this is a, basically saying the same thing that they by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation is it in is it in Romans chapter 1 no maybe it's in Romans chapter 2 I can't remember but it talks about how evil conduct among God's people causes the name of God to be blasphemed. You know, when when some when a Christian messes up and the world sees that, that's a that's a terrible black eye to the church, isn't it? Well, on the flip side of that, when they see our good works. <coughs> They glorify God in the day of visitation. So we've got a lot of responsibility, don't we? Looks like we're about out of time. Any comments here? I think I've mentioned this before, but it's not just when a church of Christ person messes up either. Oh yeah. It's just the religious world in general. Mm -hmm. It's just like Because you know, they yeah. don't they don't know that to, yeah. to them it's all the same and yeah, you're right. All right, looks like we're out of time. Thanks for your comments. First uh, Peter <laughs> chapter 2, about verse 13, Sunday morning, Lord willing. <coughs> Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study here at Commissary. Uh, if you're visiting, we're very pleased that you're here. And we invite you to join us anytime you have an opportunity. Have a few announcements to make uh, before we begin our service. Um, there's a nursery should you need that out the double doors. And it would be a good time to silence your electronic uh, devices if you haven't already done so. We'll be meeting again, again uh, as a congregation on Sunday morning at 9.30. Of course, we meet Sunday evening at 5.30 and Wednesday at 7. Um, I'm going to go over uh, the, the sick that I have, and some of them have been written in and scratched out, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll get uh, most of them. Uh, please remember uh, those that we have mentioned this past week, either with health problems or upcoming surgeries. Uh, Glenda Clements, uh, 
Randall Glover. Hank Walters did have his surgery and he's doing okay. Remember Kyla Penny who's uh, ha struggling with, uh, with cancer. Eddie Clore had his surgery uh, in Tulsa and he is back home now. They were able to do that um, basically as an outpatient. He just had to have stents. So please, uh, please continue to remember those uh, in our, our prayers. Uh, Beth Sponhorst, uh, we announced, uh, it's a friend, Angie Goins, co-worker. She had her surgery in New York and uh, is, is doing as expected. It was a very serious surgery. Please continue to remember her. Uh, Chubb McAvoy will have uh, surgery the 13th. Uh, he'll have his shoulder replaced and the carpal tunnel at the same time. So please, please remember him. Uh, also, let's remember Louise Banks and Ken and, and Naomi Burrow, uh, Jodine and Mike Ellis, uh, they all uh, have some health issues. We need to remember them. Um, especially tonight, as Evan mentioned, uh, Jason Moore and his family is in Little Rock. Uh, very serious condition. So please uh, remember that family. Remember Rick and Linda too, as they travel and they're really close with them. Yeah. Okay. Almost yeah. Too. Yeah, I got a text uh, from Rick and Linda saying that they had gotten down there this afternoon. Yeah. And so uh, all that, fa there's probably several in that family will be traveling. So let's remember them also. Uh, also, uh, uh, Janet Clifton, uh, it's out in Russellville. She's probably going to have a procedure on her foot. She's not. She's not doing uh, doing well. So please remember her also. Are there others that I need to mention? Uh, we need. Uh, we're going to have holiday boxes uh, to deliver the 16th, and uh, they've been working on those back here already, making preparations. But what we need. Uh, names. If you know someone that needs a holiday box, food for the the, thanks, uh, the Christmas season here, uh, we need those names by Sunday. Of course, we have some names that we uh, already, but we don't have any new names. We hadn't gotten any. So please remember, if you know someone that needs a box, uh, let one of the elders know or let Steve and Sheila know. Uh, our services for December 17th, of course, as we've announced, we'll be at the CRC gym. Uh, we'll have uh, our services out there, then a potluck, and a Christmas party to follow. Finger foods, sandwiches, and so forth. Um, are there other things I should mention? If not, in our services uh, tonight, uh, Wes will be uh, leading singing in just a minute. Uh, Evan will extend the invitation, and uh, I don't have the closing prayer down. Wade Taylor, he's got the closing prayer. And uh, if that's if if we don't have anything else, uh, would you bow with me and let's have a word of prayer? Father, we're indeed thankful for this day, the blessings of it, and the privilege to be here on this midweek evening to study and and worship and have fellowship. Father, at this time, we're mindful of those that we've just mentioned that are sick, have scheduled surgeries, and are having health problems, and we ask your blessings upon them. Our Father, we are especially concerned now with Jason Moore and his, his family. And Father, we ask your blessings upon him and that situation, and, and we pray, Father, as our will, that he would be able to recover from this. Our Father, we pray for those in his family that are traveling and friends and give them a safe journey as they travel to and from the Little Rock. Our Father, we are thankful for everything that you give us and help us to realize that one day we give an account for the way we use the blessings that you give us. And give us wisdom to use them correctly. We're most thankful for the spiritual blessings that we enjoy. <coughs> And Father, we know that all spiritual blessings are in your Son, and we're so thankful for them. Thankful for the forgiveness of sins that's possible through his blood. 
the privilege to come before you in prayer. Our Father, we ask you now to be with those that spread your word uh, here with us at Commissary and throughout the area and throughout the world. And, and be with those in Haiti and in Africa. And we ask your blessings upon all those that, that are working uh, to bring souls to thee. Our Father, we pray that you would be with us in our worship service this evening as we sing and as we study together. We pray, Father, that we would always do our very best to walk the way your son walked, to try to walk in his footsteps. Forgive us when we fail you. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Surrender, though at his blessing. 
Deeper and deeper I go, rising with soul in rapture, far from the world below. Joy in the place of sorrow, peace in the midst of pain. Jesus will give, Jesus will give, he will uphold and sustain. Invitation song will be 308. 380. Good evening. Take your Bibles and turn to Psalm 37. Psalm 37, I was reading through the book of Psalms recently, and this book just really, or this psalm really made me stop and think. Uh, lots of wise sayings in this psalm, of course, God's Word in general, sure, but in particular this one, and... Uh, you know, life's tough. You know, we, we had the prayer list a while ago. Lots of people are suffering. But God's Word reminds us that it's all going to be all right. Uh, just like the song says, heaven will surely be worth it all. Um, we're reminded of that when we, we read a psalm like this. The introduction to my... Uh, in my Bible, the introduction to this psalm says this collection of wise sayings is often compared to the book of Proverbs. Its basic theme is to commend trust in God for everyday living in the face of wickedness and temptation because despite temporary prosperity, the wicked must ultimately fail. Each section of the psalm contains some reference to the failure of the wicked and the ultimate triumph of the righteous. It is an alphabetic acrostic in which every opening word of every other verse begins with a succeeding letter of the Hebrew alphabet. I think Psalm 119 does that also, but I think it's every eight verses it introduces a new section with a new uh, word and a new letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And I, I don't know, I don't remember if I've heard this or if I made this up, <clears throat> but it's God's word from A to Z is a way to think about that. You know, and it, I guess this is Hebrew poetry. And uh, from what little I know about it, what little I've read about it, it, was, it might, have been, might have been done that way as a memorization tool. And uh, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful section of Scripture here. And it's definitely got a poetic flow to it. And uh, I think a lot of times God's Word has things like that to help us, to help us remember uh, His Word. So... As we, we think about how tough life is at times, and uh, reading a psalm like this just reminds us to keep on keeping on because it's all worth it. As, as we follow God and His teachings, it's all worth, it's all worth it. It's all going to be okay. So I'm just going to take off reading here and I don't know how many times I'll stop and reflect. I may read the whole thing. I'm not sure yet. But let's just uh, take off reading here. Psalm 37 it says it's the Psalm of David. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. 
Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Now, I, I, I want to stop right there. If the desires of your heart is ungodliness, you're not delighting yourself in the Lord. If you delight yourself in the Lord, He's going to give you the desires of your heart. What's the desires of your heart? You're delighting yourself in the Lord, so the desire of your heart is to be well-pleasing to Him. And it's going to happen. You're going to be well-pleasing to Him if you delight in the Lord. Verse 5, Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in His way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. Do you have a problem with anger? Why? Well, you know, sometimes it's easy to just get all bent out of shape. It only causes harm. I think this is just a great reminder. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. This right here, waiting on the Lord, it's not only a theme here in, in Psalm 37, it's a, it's a theme, it's a central theme throughout the entire Bible. Waiting on the Lord. Uh, one that comes to mind is Isaiah 40, verse 31. But they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And uh, I'm not going to keep trying to quote that because I'll mess it up. But you know the, the scripture I'm talking about. I'm talking about having eagle's wings, mount up like with eagle's, with eagle's wings, something to that effect. Wait on the Lord. You'll renew your strength. What verse did I get to? Uh, where did I get to? Ten. Ten? Okay. I should have just kept read, reading and uh, been quiet. Thank you. Verse 10. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but he shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And Jesus quotes this in the Sermon on the Mount. The meek shall inherit the earth. Notice verse 11, But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, to slay those who are of upright conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord, like the splendor of the meadows, shall vanish. Into smoke they shall vanish away. The wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. For those blessed by him shall inherit the earth, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. He is ever merciful and lends, 
and his descendants are blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom, and his tongue talks of justice. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord. There it is again. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native green tree, yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man and observe the upright, for the future of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in, time of tro in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in Him. I love that. That'll, that'll help get you through the day. That'll help get you through the week, won't it? In verse 25 especially, I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. He is ever merciful and lends, and his descendants are blessed. If you're a member of the Lord's church, you are his descendants. You're a child of God. And it's going to be all right. I got good news. It's going to be all right. And for the most part, it already is. Maybe you're not a child of God, but you'd like to be. Maybe, maybe you're an erring child of God and would like to come home. If we can help you in any way tonight, please come now while together we stand and as we sing. Just as I am without for this opportunity to come together tonight to worship you and have fellowship. Father, we ask your blessing as we go through the rest of this week that you strengthen us when we are tempted to stumble. Father, we also ask for strength to forgive those and to help those who we see stumble around us. Father, we know that Satan has many ways to work on everyone. We pray also especially for our young people. It is a tough world this day and time, Father. We ask that you bless them especially. 
We know you're in charge, and we ask for you to watch over our young people. Father, we ask you to, for your loving, merciful hand in all those who are sick and those who are about to have surgery and are going through treatments. Father, we know that everything that is best is in your hands, and your will will be done. We pray that if it is your will for them to get better, and we pray that your will be accepted if it is time for them to be going on to home. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We know that we all fall short, and it is only through your gift through him that we can ever see you in eternity. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.